Welcome to part two and day two of the second iteration of the Milk Thistle Jelly. In the last video I did on the Milk Thistle Jelly, it did not quite go to plan. So here I am trying it again. I have a better formulated plan, I think. And I did a little bit of research. I got a lot of comments from people saying to use green apples. So I have green apples. And we're going to try to do this a little bit differently and I'm going to focus a lot on making an apple jelly with essence of milk thistle again. But this time, just doing it differently, like I said, differently. Wow, okay. No more need to repeat myself there. I already took the time yesterday to gather the flowers, give them a rinse, pluck the petals, and create an infusion with them. So that's been sitting overnight. It is right here and it is ready to go. Next, all I need to do with this is strain it out and save the liquid. Then we're going to jump into using the apples. And so with this, I have a interesting idea, I think, but I will get into that when we get there. So first and foremost, let's get started straining this liquid situation. I have a headache today, so my brain processing is a little slow, apparently. It'll be a fun time. <laughs> Still looking like that very familiar grey goop. Hopefully it'll have a beautiful colour this time still. Okay, also, just so you all know, I dampened this towel. I got a comment last time saying in order to kind of preserve more of the liquid, it's a good idea to moisten the towel this way it doesn't absorb it as it's uh, straining through it. So that was a really good tip and I really appreciate that. Can't quite tell if there are dog hairs in here or if that's uh, still part of the petals. Oh well, it's for my family. Dog hairs are just part of life here. <laughs> that one is most definitely a dog hair. <laughs> on the process. I have prepped all of the flower infusion. It is still a beautiful amber color, which I'm very thankful for. And I just grabbed six green apples because that's the number that felt right to my brain. And I have them boiling on the stove. My plan right now, get it up to a boil, reduce it, let it sit till they're soft. Then I'm gonna mash them up a bit, still in the water, allow it to cook a little longer, get them soft again, and then I'm going to try to um, squeeze it through a uh, cloth again and hopefully get more pectin this time and essence of apple. And then I'm gonna mix it all together and see what happens. So that's the goal. So now it's just kind of a waiting game and I was going to put it on the stove out here, the uh, hot plate, but that is a bit of a bigger jar than I, or jar, 
pot. Wow, my brain is a mess today. <laughs> There's a bit of a bigger pot than I prefer to have on top of my hot plate and I'll just bring it over here uh, when I'm filming and put it on a uh, trivet. Good golly, so that you all can see the process. All right, see you in a minute. Here they are, definitely looking a little bit ugly at this point, but that's okay. All I need to do now is mash them up. Alrighty, I got them mashed up and put them back on the stove. They're gonna simmer for five more minutes. Then I'll take them off, strain them out. I think I'm just gonna put them into a cloth on top of a bowl and let them cool there for a minute before I uh, squeeze out the juice. So, see you in a moment. Once again, using a bit of a damp uh, towel. While this may not look so appetizing, it smells so, so good. I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit longer and then I think try to squeeze out as much liquid as I can get. And then I'll take this guy over here and kind of combine the two and run through my typical jam recipe. Alrighty, so there's what I drained out of the apples and all of its interesting glory. It kind of reminds me of applesauce a little bit. So now I'm gonna measure out these two, add them to a pot, and well, see how it goes. Look how pretty she is. It's perfect. I'm not sure if it'll congeal entirely. It might just be kind of a loose jam, but I'm so here for it. It's beautiful and it's perfect. Perfect for me. <laughs> So guess what was successful? I'm very proud of myself. I'm very happy. This turned out beautifully. I couldn't even have asked for something better. I'm so happy. I almost cried. I did not quite get on camera how excited I was, but my goodness, I could not stop talking about milk thistle jelly for about two days after I finished making it. It's, it's been a couple of days. It's gone now. So it was a fan favorite and uh, my favorite craft. I really am so proud of it and glad that I worked for it. And so 
now I'm going to just kind of recap what I did and how you can do it too, because honestly, it was a really fulfilling recipe and I hope some of you get to try it out as well. So without further ado, let's get into this. To make milk thistle jelly, you'll need one cup of tightly packed milk thistle blossoms, one cup of water, three to four green apples, half to one cup of sugar based on preference, and half a lemon. When I was making the jelly, I kind of was guessing and made it a little bit differently than what I have written as my final recipe. But after doing some speculation and looking at how it actually went, I lessened the apples used. I used six in my recipe, but I had some trouble with a cloth situation, which we'll get into. And so I don't think you need as many as I used. Um, the blossoms I kept the same and all the rest is really just how I make jams and jellies anyhow. So I learned from many mistakes and I am very happy that I did. So, to make this jelly, begin by gathering up some milk thistle heads, flower heads. I gathered about 12 to 15 for my second batch. The earlier one I grabbed so many, you don't need as many as I had gathered. They are much poofier than I had really expected. So now they have 12 to 15, nice, beautiful, purple, big, fluffy ones. Then take them inside, rinse them off. That way you'll get rid of any bugs or uh, dirt that's kind of stowed away on them. Then take them out of the water and dry them off on a tea towel. Let them sit here for a minute. They're harder to work with when they're really soaking, but they don't need to be dry before you start the next step. After they've dried a bit, grab them. I would recommend maybe with a glove or between um, a layer of towel, because they're very prickly, and pluck the purple blossoms from the flower head. I just put them in a bowl and make sure to double check for bugs here, because I definitely had a couple that still were stowing away kind of part of the process when you're working with wild crafted things. Once you have about one cup gathered, bring a pot of water to boil, just a little bit more than one cup. Then pull it off, allow it to set off the heat, just hold it in the air for a handful of seconds until it stopped bubbling, and then pour it over the flowers. Then cover with a tea towel and leave to infuse overnight. If need be, you can allow it to infuse for one to two hours, but I would recommend the full night for the most potency. And that is set. Looking forward to working with it tomorrow. The next day, begin by straining the milk thistle blossoms from the water. I just put a towel over a bowl and poured the uh, rather interesting looking blossoms on top of it and squeezed. Make sure to get every last drop you'll need one cup of this liquid. Then gather up all of your apples in a pot of water and bring it to a boil. Then reduce it down to a simmer and allow it to cook here for about five minutes. Once the five minutes are up, smush the apples a little bit, just kind of crush them. They will not look very pretty at this point, but that's okay, that's what we're looking for. Mushy apples. <laughs> then bring it to a simmer again and allow it to cook all mashed up for about five more minutes. Then pull it off and put them onto a tea towel and to a, in a bowl. Again, similar to what I did with the um, milk thistle blossoms. Then here, I just allowed them to cool a bit. I kind of mashed them up. They became similar to applesauce. And once it was cool enough to touch, I picked up the towel and uh, squeezed and tried to get the liquid out. I found uh, twisting the towel to be a really good method, but I would personally recommend not using a thickly woven cloth. I think something like a cheesecloth might be good, though I'm not entirely sure that might be too delicate. I really want to try with a more thinly woven tea towel, but uh, just something that you can squeeze liquid through. I ended up having kind of a hard time with this, but I still was able to succeed for the most part. What'll come out is this really gelatinous <laughs> liquid, and that's the pectin, and that's what you want, this pectiny good stuff. Once you have at least one cup of the liquid, this is when it just jumps into making jam or jelly. 
So take the one cup of the apple jelly situation, add that to a pot along with your one cup of milk thistle infusion. Then just add in your sugar and lemon and cook it down. For this kind of thing, I would recommend getting it up to about 220 degrees. That's the prime gelling point. Or you can do a test, putting a plate in the freezer, getting it really cold. Then when you think it is gelling properly, take a, a little drip onto that cold plate and let it cool a bit. If you can run a finger through it and it's gelled, you're golden. If it kind of seeps back together, it needs to cook a little longer. But once it's reached the gelling point, take it off the heat, add it to a jar. Let it cool, cap it off, and then there you go. This is a refrigerator jelly, jam jelly, and so I personally did not can it, but you can keep it in the refrigerator for quite a while. But it is a beautiful, fun project. I am so happy with that, how it turned out. And it's one of those really, um, intense projects that I love. I like the tedious things and this has a lot of tedious steps. So keep that in mind if you're going to jump into this. It does take a lot of time, but personally I found it to be time well spent and it was really fun and engaging. I actually think this would be a fun project to do with kids or other people because it's beautiful and exciting working with flowers, getting to go gather them. It's just, it was fun and really grounding. So I hope you all enjoyed and give it a try. And I think I'm gonna close this video out here because I did it. I made the milk thistle jelly. I am so proud of myself. I don't know if you can tell you probably can, but I was very upset in the last one of this when it didn't pull through. And this time I'm just so beyond happy. So anywho, thank you for watching. If you haven't already seen my other channel, I would recommend checking it out there. I air vlogs of my daily life. There's a lot more magic and herbalism and these things that I just tend to do. And I know it's not for everybody, but if you can, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, herbal profiles, and some other fun things. And it's really what keeps things running over here. So I couldn't do this without you guys and I really appreciate it. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.